All right. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. We're here. We're live. At least I'm live. I think I'm live. I think I'm live. All right. <laughs> welcome, everyone. Happy Friday and welcome to Adobe Live. If this is your first time joining us, uh, thanks for being here on Adobe Live. If this is your first time watching one of my live streams, thank you for being here as well. If you're watching this on the replay, thanks for watching the replay. I love replay counts. Replay views are very important to me. All right, um, so just to give you guys a couple of quick housekeeping rules before we dive into today's topic. Uh, for those of you who are new, this is Friday, so we do Friday master classes. And when I say we, I mean the photography evangelist here at Adobe. So uh, Paul Trana usually kicks things off with one on um, Photoshop, Photoshop or gra no graphic design first. And then I do one on photography and then um, we have a daily creative challenge for Photoshop, and then Paul comes back to do one for graphic design, and then we have one for um, uh, motion design, which is uh, um, Jason Levine, who's on sabbatical, so we won't see Jason today. But we then have one for the people that are doing uh, UX UI design with Howard Pinsky, as well as um, people that uh, want to then come back after that for another design challenge, I think it's Illustrator at that point, and then last but not least, ending the day will be um, uh, Kyle Webster doing digital painting and drawing in both um, Photoshop and Fresco and maybe even Illustrator. I can't remember. But we got a lot going on today, so I don't want to um, spend too much time talking about what we're going to do. I'd rather do it. So we're going to be doing uh, something that I've been kind of just like thinking about doing for a while, and that's iPhone or smartphone if you're on, on Android. Smartphone photography. Like, I, I've been doing this master class um, for, God, I don't know, a year now. And all of the classes have been based on professional photography, people that are using DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. And uh, yeah, I, do, I do show some of the mobile stuff. I show, like, the editing on your phone and editing on, um, on your... Um, on your iPad or, or tablets, but mostly shooting with professional cameras. Well, today we're not going to touch a professional camera at all. We're going to, we're not going to touch Photoshop at all. We're going to do it all on mobile. Um, we're, well, all of the shooting will be on mobile. Let's put it that way. Uh, we're going to use a smartphone for everything that we're going to do today. And we're going to, um, uh, if you're having a problem, someone's Sherry saying she's having a hard time seeing me. Everything looks good on my end. So try a refresh, Sherry, if, if uh, hopefully you will get it back. Yep, refresh. Thanks for uh, pointing out, out for Sherry. Sherry. Um, yep, iPhone 12 Pro here. Love it. Yep, we're going to be using a 12 Pro. I'm going to be using my 12 Pro Max. And for those of you who are, just noticed some comments over there on Facebook and there's some over there on YouTube and YouTube. Uh, if you're watching this somewhere else, that's awesome. But if you want me to see your comments, head over to um, b.net slash Adobe Live. Uh, b.net slash Adobe Live is where I'm going to be concentrating my viewing on that one chat because it's just too, too much to look at all the different questions on all the different chats uh, that you may be watching this on. So if you just want to watch and hang out wherever you are, that's awesome. But if you want me to see your questions, see your comments, see whatever it is, then head over to b.net slash Adobe Live. All right, um, what I'm going to do next is kind of just, I have a laundry list of tips. I know I said 10, but that was just kind of, because if I said 100, <laughs> you know, people probably wouldn't tune in. We're going to definitely do more than 10, uh, but I wanted to get 10 uh, just as a base foundation, and then we'll dive in and do a lot more than 10. So uh, I see some folks over in the chat. I see Steve, I see Shari, I see Sam Peterson, Murray. Clifton, um, Stephen, and Varun, Varun, hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Bernard, welcome to everyone. Bernard, all the way from South Africa, and I see some first-time viewers here as well. So great to have you all here. Let's start off with why your phone. Like, why, why this device over there? Why that? Because smartphone photography was one of those things when it first started out, it was just, you know, you took reference shots, like you took snapshots with it. No one really considered it a, a serious camera because when they first came out, the resolution was super low, the quality of the images looked, didn't look really that great, and uh, you were just taking pictures because you could, because it was a device you had with you at all times. 
Well, now the manufacturers that make smartphones have concentrated and in many cases, they're engineering around the camera because they know that's one of the main reasons people buy a new phone. Like you buy an upgrade because it has a better camera. That's one of the main reasons. Apple has over a thousand engineers working on the camera alone on the iPhone. So that lets you know how important it is to Apple. Samsung, all the other ones, the same thing. They spend a lot of time showing you how great the camera is in their ads and how great the camera is in their commercials because they know all the other stuff you already do. You already run apps. You already got a great screen. You have, you know, decent, great or good battery life, whatever it is. And you have um, water resistant and all that other stuff. They, 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 do, they know you got all that. So what's going to make you upgrade? A better camera, a better being able to take better shots with your phone. And so... Um, I decided to take this masterclass and dedicate it to getting better shots with your phone. Larry Becker in the house. I see you there. All right. Uh, so since it's the camera you have with you at all times, let's talk about some basics right off the bat. So tip number one, and this is tip number one, regardless of what camera you're using, clean your lens. So one of the, one of the things that will make your images look blurry, look out of focus, look um, like they're they're not great is the your, your lens is dirty so take get a lint free cloth you can get a small one that goes in your wallet you get one that you keep with you at all times and just literally go ahead and clean all the lenses all the different because this this has three cameras so clean clean each one so if you're gonna take some if you're gonna you know go out, take it out of your pocket to take some serious photos then first thing you do want to do is clean it now. The thing that people people always tell you that hey clean the camera clean the you know clean the lens clean the thing that you're gonna you shoot with. Tip number two is a lot of people take selfies and they never think about the other camera. There's a camera up here. Clean that one too. That's the one that's taking all those shots when you're holding your phone up in front of you. You're taking those shots in the mirror, so forth and so on. So take the time to clean not just the back cameras but the front cameras as well. All right. Um, now, an interesting uh, fact fact point is that my my friends, like my some of my close friends, some of my work colleagues, some of my uh, people that I've known for years, send me photos all the time because they want me to fix them. They want me to make some adjustment. They want me to do something to the photo. A uh, friend of mine, dear friend of mine, you know, from years ago, just sent me a photo the other night. He wanted uh, uh, his his uh, his wife to be you know, extracted from the background because the background was busy. So I get this all the time. But one of the, one of the shots I got recently, and I'll show it to you in just a second here, and, and this is tip number two besides clean your camera, is clean whatever the subject matter is going to be. So if you're taking a picture of you know, a little statuette, take a few moments to wipe it down because what you're glancing at and you're not seeing anything on it right now, that's the stuff that will show up in every shot you take. And you'll spend an inordinate amount of time trying to remove all that dust, all those things, all those little specks, all those little pieces of hair, all those little whatevers off the image in post. And we just don't want to take, have to spend time doing that. Uh, I don't, Sean, I don't charge them anything. They're friends. Um, I, I don't charge them anything. All right. Anyway, uh, so let me switch over to, now I'm saying clean the subject, but what if your subjects, people, what if your subjects a setting? What if your subjects, um, like my friends having lunch? So let me go into this shot and let me show you what I'm talking about. Here's the original shot, they, and I cropped their, their heads off so they were, they're not embarrassed if they watch this stream. But they were like, Terry, can you clean the table for us? So in other words, typical, this was a bridal shower actually. Typical, get together, you know, the woman on the right got up out of her chair and, and huddled in with the other two to take a portrait. And, and they didn't think about the table is going to be in the portrait. So what you end up with is all that distracting stuff, what you had for lunch, <laughs> the water bottles, the phones, the masks, the empty cups, the drink, the water bottle, all that 
stuff. I won't call it what I would normally call it. But all that stuff on the table ends up being taken away from the portrait. Now, you could crop up, obviously. You could crop up to a point to where um, you, you can cut out a lot of it. But if I crop too high, then I'm going to start cutting off the person on the left's hands and arms. So it, then it becomes a weird looking photo with, with amputations. So we don't want that. So take a moment. Hey, you're going to get in that group shot. You're going, to, someone's going to, you're going to hand someone your phone to take a picture, look around you. Say, okay, is this what we want to represent ourselves with the photo? Like, do we want all this stuff on the table? Should we clear the table first before we take that shot? That's the kind of stuff you want to think about when you're going to do um, smartphone photography. Okay, uh, next up, and along those same lines. Uh, so I, I she, she was like, can you clean the table? And I did. <laughs> so... And then she's like, well, I don't like my mask showing. So I, I start adding things into the photo to kind of cover them up. So I added a, a drink from Pixel Squid in 3D to cover up the mask in front of her hand. But I spent a ton of time working on this when it would have taken seconds to just remove the stuff out of the photo before you take it. So it, it, whether it's in the foreground or whether it's stuff in the background, Get rid of the distractions, move your subject over, go to an empty table that's clean, take the shots, get away from the table, do whatever you need to do to take the shot where you don't have all those distractions. And that way you won't have all the stuff that you need to fix in post that you never saw. All right, um, speaking of distractions, I'm gonna to get to another one here. Uh, where did I put it? Here it is. So, and this, I've told the story a bunch of times. So if you've seen this, just bear with the joke that I'm about to tell, because it's, it's, it's a true story. So uh, before I zoom in on this photo, high school graduation, no, high school reunion. Um, friends of mine that I graduated from high school with, this was like, our, I think our 20, 20th or 25th reunion, I can't remember. Uh, graduated from high school, went to the reunion, stood in the, like the uh, area outside the reunion hall, uh, take some group pictures, so forth and so on. I did not think to look around the people that I'm photographing in this group shot. So, my buddy in the back does not have a giant afro. That is a plant. Stand, you can even see part of the plant down in the middle there. Those are plants behind his head. And his head just happened to be perfectly positioned to where it looks like he has this huge giant afro. I got home, I looked at these shots, and I laughed for days thinking when I looked at this shot. Like, I just could not stop laughing. Um, so, the just look around you. Make sure that you don't, like, like, like just make sure you don't have stuff that's, uh, I think, and Larry Becker, who's in the audience, uh, reminded me of the official term of that as a merger something sticking up out of someone's head that is behind them because, uh, you know, it, it just looks weird. So take, take a few moments, take your time, go around your shots and look. All right, so that's uh, tip number two, clean your subject area or your subject if you're taking a, a picture of something physical. Uh, and just just look around the shot before you snap the shutter and make sure everything is clean. Everything would look the way you want. And look at it after you take the shot. Hey, before everyone dis disperses, look at the shot really quick. Visually glance around it. Make sure it's good. Okay, great. Looks great. No problem. All right. Uh, tip. Now, this is a phone tip, this next one. So I'm going to bring up my phone here. All right. Okay, you see I, I've got my lock screen up there. So you, you're on the lock screen and there's a camera icon in the bottom right hand corner. You can, you can click that camera icon and, and get to the camera. But if you just swipe left, it will take you directly to the camera immediately. So swipe left will go to the camera immediately um, from the lock screen. You don't have to unlock your phone first. So that is tip number three. Tip number four. Get low for better angles. So I'm going to get out of the camera, go back, go back to this. And what do we mean by get low? So for example, 
Uh, I got a photo here that this is one. I didn't take this with my phone, but I had my mirrorless camera there and I took some behind the shots, behind the scenes shots with my phone. And I, I'm standing in the middle of the street there taking a picture of Manhattan Bridge and I'm just like, you know, click. And it's okay. But then I, I brought out my, uh, I brought up a platypod, which I'm going to talk about that in a second, and put my camera actually on the ground to get a better perspective, to get low. And you will always, your shots will just look more epic when you're taking scenery, when you're taking something that you want to be bigger than life, when you get the camera down lower to the ground. So tip number, um, tip number four, get down low. So that that's, will just always make things look better. Um, yep, Christine, yeah, all the tips won't work on every platform, so that's a, that might be an iPhone-only tip. Okay, next up, uh, let's get down and let's talk about the next one. Tip number five, um, when you're gonna photograph food, so people like to uh, photograph what they're eating. They like to show off you know, or, or just maybe your food photography. Maybe you just like showing a beautiful composed dish because there's an art in food and, and presentation as well. So a couple of tips, uh, this is all around food photography. Number one, if you go, now that we can go back to restaurants, uh, hopefully in the very near future, if you, ha if you can already, um, get next to a window because you're gonna have the natural light coming in from the window if you can. So if there's a window or an opportunity to sit outside and you're under an awning because you don't wanna be in direct sunlight, but if you can get outside, get outside or get by the window to do your shoot. But that's not the tip. The tip is shooting the angle of the food. So for example, uh, this is the, the angle people typically shoot food at. They, they shoot like, you, you see people doing this all the time. They'll sit there and they'll, they'll hold their camera like that and click or like that and click. And, and they're, they're shooting basically down at a 45 degree angle. Now I'm a little lower than that, but that's kind of what I'm, I'm referring to. They, they shoot at that angle down. Now this one actually includes one of the tips is get in tighter. Like really show off the food or show off the presentation. Don't shoot way back here and you just have all this empty space and silverware and all that other stuff around. If you're trying to shoot the food, shoot the food. Don't shoot all the other stuff that has nothing to do with the presentation. The phone in the background on the table, the empty glass, the dirty water container, all that other stuff. I'm joking. But all that other stuff, the other person's plate, get that out of the shot. So again, if you're trying to really make a better looking food shot than make a better looking food shot. So uh, so this is a better example where it's getting down a little lower, still should have got rid of that glass because that, little, that glass has a little spot on it. Now I can fix that little spot, it's not the end of the world, but getting down lower, getting closer to your food. Um, even better yet, this one. So getting right up on it, like putting your phone like right up, not touching, but close to your food. So really then it's about the food. It's about, oh, look at the sauce, look at this, look at that. Look at how tender the meat is. Look at, you know, if you don't eat meat, look at how great the vegetables look. Whatever it is, get right in there because now it's all about the food. It's nothing to do with the plate. There's no glasses. There's no distractions. There's none of that other stuff around that makes you think, um, hey, I, I need to fix all the other stuff around it. So just get tighter on the food and get down um, at the food's level. Oh, now. Does that mean that you can't take it at any other angle? So, so I, I showed I showed this this one, and I got right to it. Now, if you're shooting a cup of coffee or a cup, well, obviously shooting directly sideways, you won't see the coffee. So that one you kind of got you kind of need to shoot at an angle, but you still need to get in tight. Um, but then there's this other. The, the other option is, if you're not going to get down tight, you're not going to get down low, then get directly above it. I don't mean at an angle. I don't mean 45 degrees, 15 degrees, whatever. I mean shooting straight down on the plate. Because a lot of presentations can't, this isn't one of them, but a lot of presentations can't be appreciated if it's at an angle because you're not seeing the complete design on the plate. So shoot straight down, get tight. And, and it crop in if you don't if you can't get tighter and shoot directly down on it if you uh, if you if the presentation requires that you shoot down as opposed to shooting at an angle. All right, next tip. Um, t -t 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 
All right, let's let's do this one. So we're gonna actually take a picture now. So I'm gonna bring up my uh, camera here. We're gonna we're gonna um, let's bring up bring up the camera. Let's bring up the phone there. Okay, so I got my phone, and I've got in my studio. I've got a little statuette. Okay, and I'm going to show you um, why angles matter. So this is the, the tip on this one is angles matter. And I'll, I'll hide Lightroom in the background for now. All right, so that you can focus on just, just the photography. So uh, number one, when you're photographing, and maybe I should skip ahead to this tip since, since I'm shooting, uh, representing a person. So if you're, if you're photographing a portrait, a, a photo of someone, the problem is your camera, at least on an iPhone, I don't know about Android, your camera defaults to the wide angle lens. Like when you fire up the camera, you're on the, the not the super wide, but you're on the wide angle. So you're on the wide lens. And when you photograph a face with the wide lens, you're basically distorting that face. You're telling that face to be fatter, to be rounder, to look distorted, so forth and so on. So my first uh, first portrait tip will be switch to the telephoto lens, even if you have to back up some, because when you switch to the telephoto lens, it won't give you that distortion. So I'll take that shot too, so you can see the difference. All right, um, now that's that's whatever tip that is. I'm not going to keep counting anymore because we're going to go past ten. All right, so that's that tip. Now next, what about the angle? When we're taking selfies, we want the camera up high. We want to shoot down on ourselves, and that's fine. But when you're taking pictures of other people, like or people are taking pictures of you, you if you shoot down on the person, you're making the person look shorter. Guaranteed. So if you have a thing about being short, shooting down on you only makes you look shorter. So just keep that in mind. If you've seen full-length portraits or full-length pictures of people and they, and the ang camera angle was up high, I guarantee you they look shorter than they really are. All right, so then you might think, okay, shoot straight on. And you can shoot straight on and that's okay. But if again, if you want, if this is again, uh, if you're getting away from the person, not directly up on the camera, not directly on them, not a selfie, shooting down low makes the person look more epic. They make them look taller and just makes it for a more epic looking photo, or in this case, a statuette. Okay, so I'm gonna bring back up, uh, bring back up Lightroom, and I'm gonna show, it. not be, I already shot this before, so I'm just gonna show you these examples, and from the last, from when I shot them yesterday. Okay, uh, I don't need to look shorter. Yeah, I don't need to look shorter, I don't need to look rounder, I don't need to look any of that. Uh, so let me show you, show you the examples here. Okay, so just, just so you can really get a feel for it, that's the wide angle lens. Look at the face and look at how round the cheeks are and how the, the hat or that she's wearing is almost completely gone because you're shooting a wide angle lens straight on. Now, that's the telephoto lens. Look at the difference. Just switching lenses, switching cameras on your smartphone went from this, oh, that, to that, just by switching to the telephoto lens. Now, you now on the iPhone, for example, you have portrait mode. That's a, a perfect mode to be in when you're shooting portraits. That's why it's called portrait mode. You might notice that you bring up your camera, it's on wide angle, and then the minute you switch the portrait, it zooms in, and you're like, oh no, I gotta back up some. You know why it zooms in? Because it's using the other camera to make a better looking portrait. So it's, it's using two cameras actually, but it's using the, the portrait lens or the portrait camera in your phone to make a better, or telephoto I should say, the telephoto camera in your phone to make a better looking portrait. All right, um, so now, next up. This is shooting down on it. So shooting down, it's okay for a statuette, but shooting up makes it look epic. So again, down, it's okay. Shooting up, oh wow, look at that. It just looks better when you shoot up on things. Now, not necessarily people. 
unless you're gonna be far enough away or you're gonna use the wide angle. In that case, it's fine to be far enough away and shoot up. But um, if it's a portrait, watch your angles if you're shooting objects. Also, your angles can make things way more interesting. Uh, what about Photoshop Camera? It's an app. Yeah, Photoshop Camera is awesome. It's got nice filters and nice things, nice camera lenses for you to use. I'm not going to get into it today, but yep, you can use uh, Photoshop Camera to get some great shots as well if you want to add some special effects behind them. Okay, uh, next tip. So your camera by default shoots, um, go switch back to the camera. Your camera by default shoots a four by three aspect ratio. So, um, so you'll notice that they're, they're not square, but they're certainly not as wide as, as you would get if you were shooting video. Cause you'll notice that when you shoot video, look how much taller it got. So this is photo and this is zoomed in photo. And this is video. So video is going to give you a taller frame, but not necessarily distorted. It's just taking more advantage of the aspect ratio. So how can you shoot a still in 16 by 9 to get that? Well, on an iPhone, if, you, if you're already in video, you can actually start a video and then snap the photo. There's a shutter to the right. So you can snap a photo while you're shooting video. But you don't have to go through that just to get 16 by 9. So I'm going to get go back to photo. And you notice there's a button at the very top, the little arrow pointing up. If I tap that arrow, that gives me, you see that 4 by 3 down there in the middle? If I tap on 4 by 3, that gives me the ability to switch to 16 by 9. So now I can take a 16 by 9 shot, even in raw, which is awesome and I get a 16 by nine shot of my image. Again, angles still matter. Zooming down low, still matters. But now I get, I get to take advantage of that taller 16 by nine frame. Okay. Let's see what's next. Next up on my tips. Um, this is one that I, I don't know that I can I, I didn't try it here with this small setup, but this is kind of a cool double exposure technique with the panel mode on your phone. So, uh, and I'm sure Androids have panel as well. And it's basically, if, if you've ever shot a panoramic, you need a super wide uh, image. You'll notice that you can, you can go into panel, you can tap, and then you just pan your phone around and then when you're done, you stop it and it creates, it stitches it all together and makes a, a super wide panel, panel shot. People have figured out a trick to get a double exposure, meaning that the subject that you start with, like the person, is in that same panel more than once. Uh, what version of iPhones are these features on? Uh, he uh, Helena, everything I'm showing you with the exception of the RAW is on iPhones for like the last six, seven, eight years iOS is the version, like you want to make sure you're on the current iOS version to get the, the way the features work, but I haven't shown you anything that hasn't been out for years. Portrait mode's been out since, I don't know, iPhone 7, iPhone 6. Um, like all the stuff I'm showing you has been out for years. It might be in a different spot depending on your iOS version, but I'm not showing you anything that hasn't been around for a long, long time. Um, okay, so next up, let's talk about uh, that double exposure technique. I'm going to see if I can, I can pull it off. If not, um, then you'll, you'll try it on your, in more space. All right, so let me uh, put up a different subject here. I'm going to put um, my Ken dial here. Ken's great for portraits. All right, so there's Ken. You can't see it yet. I'll switch to the camera. And let's go into, let's get out of the the swipe down thing. Let's go into Pano. All right, so I'm in Pano. This is the Pano feature that, that I talked about. Now, in order for this feature to work, and I'm, I'm gonna have to talk, I have to talk you through it while I do it, because I'm gonna need both hands. All right, so basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna start a little bit to the left of your subject, and you're gonna go ahead and start your Pano. And you gotta start moving a little bit. And then all you do is stop moving 
and your subject moves over. Ah! <laughs> your subject moves over. Ah! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to cancel that one. Hold on, Ken keeps falling. <laughs> All right, let me put let, let me put him a little further back. Okay, let's try it again. So panel, start moving, stop moving. The subject, which is usually a person, jumps over to the other side. And then you keep moving to complete your panel. And when you're done, if it worked, oh wait, hang on, was I not taking it? Nope, it didn't. Well, well you can start to see it there. You'll get the person in both shots. I'm gonna try it one more time. All right, I'm gonna start from way over here. Pano, pan, stop. You tell the person you've stopped. They move over. Oh, I know what's happening. It's stopping because it sees my hand there. Hold on. All right, let's try it again. It stops capturing. That's why it's hard to do it with, with a dial. It's easier to do with a person. All right, here we go. Pan. Stop. Person moves over. Keep panning. All right, I might have it that time. I didn't. Well, what you will end up with if you have a real person doing this is you'll have the person in the shot twice. They'll be in their original spot and then they'll be in the other spot too. It's hard to do it with a, a small, small studio like this, small setup, but uh, it, it's a cool effect when you see it. All right, I, just because I refuse to give up, I'm gonna try it one last time. Pano. Pano. Okay. Stop. Yeah, if you stop too long, then it stops. All right, let me just keep my hand on it. Pano. Person. Person. And I think I got it. That time I got it. Almost. Well, again, it's blurry. You can barely see the first one. But if you do it right with pers people, I've tried it. I've tested it. It works great with people. It's hard to do it with inanimate objects because, again, the stopping, hand holding. If you do it on a tripod, you can probably get, pull it off. But try that double exposure panel look um, and that, that tip will hopefully uh, yield some cool results. Again, try it with, with people as opposed to objects. It works much better because you can just stop and the person can move over and you don't have to worry about uh, the camera. All right. Um, all right, next up, we are Go into the next tip. We did that one. We did that one. Oh, here's another one. And this is just a more of a composition framing tip. So um, <laughs> when, I, when I go back and I look at pictures that were taken, like my mom took of me when I was a kid, I always notice that I'm way down in the corner of the shot and there's just all this empty wall space <laughs> above me. And I'm like, mom, what, what were you thinking? Why, why am I so little in the frame, but everything else is like this wasted space is just up there. And, and basically the tip is don't shoot your kids or, or, or people way down lower in the frame. But actually, no, the tip is uh, get in tight on your subject. So hang on one minute here. I just need to set one thing here. There we go. Get in tight on your subject. So fill the frame. In other words, like don't leave a bunch of empty space, a bunch of empty headroom. Like for example, here, this is a great example of filling the frame. Even if it means cropping off some of the subject. Cropping off some of the subject is a very popular technique nowadays. Uh, you don't want to prop, crop off anything important, obviously. But filling the frame with your subject is just going to make a great looking portrait. Uh, all right, next up. Same thing here, filling the subject. And it's not, it's not just people, like that's a person shot, obviously. But here's a shot of uh, one of the monuments in downtown Detroit. 
just this this Joe Lewis fist that's just sitting there in the middle of the street on Jefferson Avenue. Uh, I shot from a uh, you know shot below up and shooting up close and making it fill the frame just makes again makes it more epic. So if you have a choice of being far away from the subject and the subject had all this empty space around it and that empty space is not important, it's not scenery, it's not something that's, that makes the shot, then get in tight. Use that telephoto lens if you can't physically get in tight, but get in tight to make the subject fill the frame. All right, um, next up is another shooting tip. And Ken, I will try you again, but this time we're, we're gonna not make you move. All right, so let's get in here and let's show this. Um, this is, is more of a lighting tip than anything else, but it also can work for uh, recomposing your shot. So let's go back to the phone. There we go. And again, let's hide Lightroom for now. All right. Um, so a couple things. So this will this will be a multi-tip session. So first and foremost, you'll notice that the light, and this I'm just using my studio light that's uh, lighting my green screen, but it's a, there's a LED light right there. And that light is, of course, also lighting my, my Ken subject right here. Now, uh, that's creating a shadow on the other side of Ken's face. And that shadow's cool. Like, that. that's not a bad thing. That's, that's a cool effect. But if I want his face to be more in the light, then just have your subject slightly give you more of a turn, more of a profile. You're going to get more of the subject's face in the light. We're going to talk about how to get more light on that other side in just a minute. That's not the tip that I'm, I want to show you today. But you'll notice that as I hover or as I get, um, it showed it there for a second. But if it detects a face, it will actually do, uh, it will focus in on the face. And that's what you should be focused in on. But let's say you want to focus in on the face or part or uh, area of the subject, but then you want to move the camera to maybe get a better angle, but you want to keep it focused. Well, if you, you press and hold, so I tap and then I press and hold, you notice that it says AEAF lock at the top. That's auto exposure and auto focus lock. So now I can move the camera anywhere I want and that focus will still be the same from the original spot and the exposure will still be the same. So even if I point it at the window, which has a bright light coming in, even if I point it at the light, the exposure does not change because I use the exposure lock feature. And you're saying, well, how do I unlock it? Like, how do I get it to not be locked anymore? Just tap and it will go back to the way it was. All right, another tip while we're here and while we're on the same um, subject, Let's say I, I just want the subject to be brighter. I don't have a light. I don't have anything. I don't want to do it in post. I just want to take a brighter photo. Well, if you notice there's a, like here, I'll show it on the shirt. You notice there's a little sun icon to the right of that, right of that focus frame. That's an actual um, knob that you can pull up and down. So if I tap and then start dragging that knob up, or down, my subject gets darker when I go down and brighter when I go up. So that's called exposure compensation. So on a professional camera, that, that's actually a feature, exposure compensation, but you actually have that on, again, I don't know about Android, but you definitely have it on iPhone. So tap, drag that little sun up or down. If your photo's overexposed and you wanna bring it down, make it darker, bring it down. If it's underexposed and you wanna make it brighter, bring it up and go higher with it. So auto exposure lock, auto focus lock, adjusting uh, exposure compensation, all parts of this. Now, I, I'm gonna skip ahead because we're on, we're in, we're, we have the ability to be right here in this, this point in time. Um, subject or, or your light is, you can't move it. Like your light's the sun, your light is something coming in that is coming in from that angle and you can't change it then what you probably wanna start getting in the habit of carrying is a little portable reflector. So these are little, these little things fold down and they can literally fit in a pocket. Like you can get a really small one or a backpack or your bag or your purse or whatever. And what these little reflectors allow you to do 
is, and of course you can get bigger ones too, but they allow you to bounce the light. See, look, look at that, look at the difference. Here, I'll, get in, I'll do telephoto. I'll get in closer. Look at his face. See the shadows on, on, his, on my left side, his right side? As soon as I put that reflector in, I'm now bouncing that light back onto his face. So instantly adding a second light or a light where you need it just by reflecting that light back onto the subject. And you have a white, or some, usually these are double-sided, so there's white on one side, in this case gold on the other. It could be silver and gold, it could be white and gold, it could be white and silver, just depends on the reflector you get. Uh, white is typically going to be softer, so that's going to give you a softer light. And gold and silver, see how much, see how much harder and how much more um, definitive that light is versus the soft white light that you're bouncing back on the subject. So um, use a reflector. Don't don't run away from uh, don't run away from light and 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 embrace it, engage it. Now let's go back here. There we go. Now, um, in, in the video description, and for those of you watching on uh, Behance, if you tap or click info, I put together a gear guide of all this kind of stuff that I'm talking about. So you're like, well, where do I get a reflector from? Which reflector do I get? So there's a gear guide in the description for, if you're watching on YouTube, there's a YouTube description. If you're watching on Behance, it's in the info tab. The gear guide walks you through or shows you all of these kinds of things. Um, what if your next tip, time of day, let's just, let's do it that way. There, photo professional photographers rarely, if ever, and usually never go out in the middle of the day to shoot because that's the worst possible light. So, um, I'm giving you examples here. Here's one. This is uh, a scene at a pool. Um, I think this was Vegas, middle of the day. Worth, and I, I just walked by and snapped the shot of, of the people just lounging by the pool. Like this wasn't for any reason. Like I just, oh, snap a picture of the people by the pool. But the harsh light, bad light, bad shadows, harsh shadows, hard shadows, all of those things are going to be prevalent in bad light. Like bad light is just bad light. It's just, it's just stay away from it, avoid it if you can. I'm gonna give you a tip. If you have no choice, like you like for whatever reason, you have to be out and shoot this in the middle of the day. But if you can avoid it, don't be out in the middle of the day. Your best times to shoot are, um, and you probably will already know this, mornings where the light's nice and soft and golden, or evenings where the, the light's nice and blue or gold, depending on time of evening. And you're just gonna get a better look, a better light, a better everything. All right, uh, next up. What if you don't have a choice? What if you just cannot, you like, I, and I've been there. I, I, I used the example the other day when I was in Egypt. Uh, the only time that we could go shoot the Sphinx because of the business trip I was on was in the middle of the day. So it's either don't go shoot it or shoot it in the worst possible light. And I know some photographers will just say, okay, I'm not gonna go shoot it. But I had to shoot it since I was there. Now, uh, that this tip won't work for a big object like a statue or a sphinx or a monument, but it will work for people or things that you're trying to photograph. So if you, um, yep, like I did today, sunny and hard shadows, exactly, uh, Nicholas. So if you have to, meaning you have no choice, you have to get out and shoot in the middle of the day, Now this is a bigger one, but this is not a reflector. This is a diffuser. So what this does is, is the light comes through it onto the subject. So it's not harsh here. I'll, I'll, I'll add a little bit more light from my light. So I, my light is above me for the studio shot. And this is making it about one or two stops darker. So it's too dark for the live stream, but the light is shining through this and softening that light. So if you just have to get out in the middle of the day, that kit in the, the, the reflector kit I listed in the gear guide comes with a diffuser, yellow, silver, white, 
and black for your reflectors or you know what you say well, why would it be black to block something like you want to block light so it, it comes with all of those different materials so that you can take one kit with you and um and it's not this big size <laughs> you can take one kit with you and um and be successful when you're photographing when you only have one light or you only have to use natural light okay we're running really low on time surprisingly so let me let me get through a couple more of these um we did that one we did that one so let's let's talk about framing when you're shooting the landscape what's in where, where do you point like do you point up do you point down do you point at the ground where do you point you put the most interesting things in the frame so for example this is this road's not that all that awesome it's just a road leading to wherever it leads to and there's some foliage on the left and right inside it's not awesome but the sky is awesome so if you look at the ratio of what's in the frame there's more sky in the frame than there is ground so you put them, you, you break it up by what's more interesting. If you're like shooting a, a cool scene, is the sky dull, blue, no clouds, gray, whatever, then point down more. Shoot more of what the foreground is if the sky's not great. If the foreground's not great, shoot more up. If both are great, awesome sky, awesome foreground, then you're gonna use the, the what is it, the one third rule. You're going to um, still point up, but you're going to like your horizon line is going to be one third of the frame uh, in, in the frame up. So um, so same thing here. The sky wasn't awesome. So I concentrated on the mountains because they were more awesome than the sky. Uh, all right. And. Da, 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 da. All right, one, one more uh, shooting tip, and then we'll get into uh, a few minutes of editing. All right, let's go back to the statuette. Bring back up the camera. Let's bring it up so you can see it. Let's put Lightroom away for a minute. And um, I'm going to switch to portrait mode because remember I said portrait mode is what you want for shooting portraits. So when I switch to portrait mode, it notice how it zoomed in. So I got to pull back a little bit. And when I pull back enough to where it says natural light, that's the sweet spot. In other words, I'm far enough away to where I'm getting the depth of field effect that portrait mode does. Now I'm going to snap a photo again, go down a little bit, shoot up. Snap one, and then I'm going to go to that photo that I just snapped, and I'm going to go to edit. And when I get into edit, there's one cool thing about portrait mode on an iPhone is that you can change the depth of field after the fact. So it, it used 4.5 f-stop at the top there. If I tap on that f-stop 4.5, then I get a slider that controls how in focus the background is. So that's f16 all the way down to f14 so if you really want your background out of focus you don't have to worry about oh it's just not out of focus enough in portrait mode you can go in after the fact and change it even the hat starting to become out of focus because or the head headpiece i should say is, be, is becoming more out of focus because of that shallow depth of field so you can control how much you want in focus that's everything in focus versus only the subjects in focus just by choosing um, to go into edit your portraits in portrait mode on an iPhone. Okay, now let's get into some editing. Since I only have a few minutes left. All right, we're in the same album. Now, I you can edit with the phone editing app on your, the like the, the pictures app on your phone. So, uh, on iPhone, it's the Photos app. On Android, I don't know, it's the Photos app. It's whatever app it is. And usually, they have some editing capabilities. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that you can't edit on your phone. But I'm, I always bring my images into Lightroom, whether I shot them in the phone or regular camera. And so some of the things you might want to consider um, that you can do after the fact on your phone is pretty amazing. So for example, on this one shot in Iceland. Um, 
I shot more of the foreground than the clouds. It was all great, but I had this one little yellow thing standing up in the middle of the water. And I could maybe have moved over and gotten it, but then I wouldn't have got as much of the mountain. So it's kind of like one of those things I, I had to live with it, but I could get rid of it now. So even on my phone, I can zoom in, I can go into the healing brush in Lightroom, and I can even just using my finger, go ahead and paint in the top of this thing. There it is. And as soon as I let go, Lightroom will pick a spot to pick up, pick to clone it from. And I can move that around. I can say, no, 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 clone it from this side over here. Then once that's done, then I can go ahead and get the rest of that pole that's down at the bottom there. And again, move this around and get a better spot to put, pick up from and use that to get rid of distractions that are in the photo that you couldn't avoid because sometimes you just couldn't avoid. All right, next up. One of the things that bugs me the most is bad white balance and crooked horizons. Those are the things that stand out. So this is blue hour. This is like sun going down Mercedes Benz Stadium in downtown Atlanta, but it's too blue. Like it makes the whole scene look blue. So when you go into color, you have a white balance eyedropper, which is probably not gonna make much of a difference in this shot. But I also have a temperature slider. So I can slide the temperature to make it less blue by adding a little bit more uh, warmth to it. So I can just warm up that shot a little bit more to make it less of a blue stadium. All right, so you can fix your white balance after the fact, especially on people. Like you don't want your people to be yellow. You don't want like, like his shirt should be, should be white, it's yellow. Their name tags, his shorts should be white, but everything's yellow because of the uh, fluorescent lights above. So instead, I'm gonna go to color, and this time I am gonna use, oh, color, not light. I am gonna use the, uh, the white balance tool. So if I tap on white balance, I can pick that and move, pick it up and move it around. And what I'm pointing for is if I had something gray in the shot, that'd be great, something that should be gray. I don't have anything really gray, but I do have the shirt that should be white and the blouse that should be black. So I move it over to the shirt, instantly fixes the white balance. I move it over to the blouse, makes it even better. So I can fix that by now just tapping OK, and my shot is now corrected for the white balance directly on mobile. All right, a couple minutes left. Um, shooting buildings from the ground, shooting cityscapes. Whether it's your phone or your professional camera, you're always going to get this perspective issue where all the buildings look like they're leaning in. And that's, again, just a bad thing. You don't want your buildings to look like they're falling, but that's just what cameras do when you're shooting down low and you're shooting up because you are down low. Uh, they're going to look like they're leaning in. So a couple things I would do. I would go into first and foremost. In Lightroom, you have um, you have optics, and you turn on your lens correction. So that will take any of the curvature out of the shot if it doesn't doesn't already do it. Next, we're going to go to geometry, and in geometry, there is upright, and I'm going to it's normally off. I'm going to choose auto, and auto upright just usually nine times out of ten will stand everything up properly so that it looks right. And then away you go, you can keep editing. So uh, just fixing your buildings with upright can, can go a long way. Now, just to show you how far you can go with your editing, here's a before shot. This was, uh, I think, Toronto, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember where this is, but anyway, it could be anywhere. <laughs> so nice building from the hotel window, looks great, but that's after I did all my adjustments. So that's fixing the geometry and then uh, fixing the tonal values, going in and painting in the sky with the adjustment brush and using the haze and pulling down the exposure to just make a more beautiful shot from my hotel window from my phone. All right, now speaking of shooting through windows, this will probably be my last tip because I'm going to be out of time. But when you're shooting through a window, Let's see, I think I have some examples up here. Um, like, here's one. Shooting through the plain window. You can see the glass. You can see the reflections. You can see the seats. You can see everything. So if you're going to shoot through a window, what you want to do then is put the phone right up against the glass. So, you know, you might lose something, like I'm losing part of the engine, but I'm going to cut way down on the reflections 
because the, the camera is up against the glass as opposed to reflecting on the glass. Same thing coming down the elevator in the hotel, looking at the Mandalay Bay across the, across the way there. I put, the, I put the phone right up against the glass so that I would not get the reflections of the elevator window coming into the shot. Now, there, by the way, there was still one more thing that I could have fixed there. Uh, I would go in and just spot remove these two little light reflections. So there was some light reflections here, here, here. I would just fix those and away I would go. All right, last but not least, um, if you're photographing something moving, cars, animals, people, running, whatever, whatever it is, give them room to run, give them room to move. You don't want, that's a good example, even though it's out of focus, that's a bad example because the horse is closer to the edge than the tail. The tail should be closer to the edge than the horse. Good example, bad example. Good example, bad example because they're like, I got all that room over there where they're not facing. So move your camera over to the side to get, uh, to get more. All right, folks, I'm out of time, but go ahead and grab um, the gear guide. Uh, you should definitely stable your camera with tripods, with all kinds of things in the gear guide. There are portable lights that you can use. You wanna light your subject there in the gear guide to diffuse those lights, make them softer, so forth and so on. And thanks, everybody, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody.